Hello. If you don't know me, my name is Vlas. I work at Itty Bitty Apps. And today, I'd like to show you a little uh, behind the scenes for this little AR demo we made um, related to Reveal. Now, you may have seen this tweet from Reveal uh, that actually shows this demo. But regardless of, you know, you've made some rounds on Twitter. That's nearly better than Barry's one. <laughs> uh, well, but re yeah, yeah. Uh, regardless of whether you've seen it or not, I am going to show it to you now. So, in order to do that, we will just launch this thing. Okay. So obviously, because it's a, an AR demo, we'll we'll need a surface. We will use this um, floor plan as a surface because. Um, it's good enough, it has enough feature points. So what I will do now is I will put an app that has been uh, specially built for this purpose. Well, not specially prepared for this purpose. In here, I will do a magic gesture and it whoa, shows up. Please excuse the uh, precision because, um, you know, a uh, Apple designed uh, wooden table would obviously be much better for this particular demo. <laughs> But still, we can uh, look around. It obviously glitches a bit. Look around, see inside the view hierarchy, even toggle wireframes on and off. And uh, yeah, change the expansion level. And we can even, even switch to Soundstagram, which is what I'm doing right now. Whoop, whoop. And we got Soundstagram in. <laughs> well, that's cool and all, uh, but obviously the question is, okay, well, how, that, how does this work? Well, uh, spoiler alert, it's all fake, but, <laughs> but, okay, it's not all fake. Let's say half of it is fake. So. We got some problems to solve here to make this demo work, right? We first need to load the view hierarchy into our sync it scene that's integrated with the R kit. We do need to correct the scale of the view hierarchy that we have loaded. And we do need to uh, implement position and orientation tracking for the phone that we point uh, the camera at. So first, loading the view hierarchy. That's the easiest part, because why? Well, we have Reveal for that. <laughs> Reveal already allows us to load the view hierarchy from the iOS app and create a scene, a 3D scene out of it, uh, which is great because, well, we'll just get to extract the sync it scene that Reveal produces into an SCN archive. We get this, which is, um, it's a bit washed out, but it, it's a screenshot of a sync it editor, which did crash a little bit on x 9 um, of uh, the scene that has been exported from Reveal. Uh, and so we just load it in our AR app, place it into the SCM view, and we're done, right? Well, not really. Uh, the problem, obviously, is it's too huge. Why? Well, uh, AR kit, as you've already heard, uh, works in meters. Uh, in physical uh, units, but reveal scene is in UI kit points because, well, that just made sense. Uh, and so if we load a view hierarchy that is 375 uh, points in width, that means it's only 375 meters wide in the AR world, which is not good. We want something, we want to scale the view hierarchy down to the uh, screen size. Well, yeah, the question is, okay, well, how, how do we know what's the scale? Well, luckily, we do know something about iOS devices. And that is, they have a pretty predefined DPI. On most iPhones that are not Plus or iPhone 10, it's 326. On most iPads, except, except for iPad mini, it's 264. So we can you know, just make it work by just taking a look at what's the device type, um, Maybe what's the scale uh, for 8 Plus or iPhone 10? The things get complicated. It was the demo was done before iPhone 10 came out, so yeah. Um, so we can just derive the DPI from device type and scale, and iPad Mini be damned. Um, 
Or, alternatively, if we would actually collect this information and reveal, we could uh, uh, take the device identifier, uh, like iPhone 10, comma uh, 3, which is iPhone 10, by the way, uh, and just have a table that gives us the TPI. Uh, theoretically, there's like a private API or something that allows you to take, uh, take that information out of UI device, but I did not go that far. Anyway, we do have DPI, and the math is pretty simple. You just multiply your... Uh, sync it points, uh, sorry, you multiply the view hierarchy points by the screen scale, multiply that by the constant for inches because imper imperial units, uh, and divide that by DPI. And you get, uh, this is not, this doesn't really look good, but it's a really dark screenshot of my table, and obviously it was 10 p.m., uh, so it was dark, but the idea is it actually nicely scaled uh, the view hierarchy uh, snapshot down to a screen scale. Nice, okay. Well, the hardest part still is the position and orientation tracking. We do want to detect where the screen is, where, what's, its, uh, what's the 3D location of its center in the real world, well, the AR simulated world, uh, and we do want to know its orientation so that when the screen is being rotated, which is something I did not show, by the way, um, <clears throat> uh, the snapshot gets rotated as well. Um, yeah, that's the hardest part. But first, before we get into that, a little bit of big background about ARKit. So what does ARKit provide to us? Actually, quite a lot for you know, the first release. Uh, we get a live video capture with access to per-frame information, like basically the video buffer and the AR kit derived data for that particular frame, like uh, you know anchors um, and camera intrinsics and stuff like that. We do get feature detection and tracking on the captured video frames. Uh, features are basically edges. Um, AR kit runs a edge detection algorithm on. On, on the frames to uh, find out those uh, little points uh, of texture in the real world it can uh, grab onto and track. Uh, it also gives you device orientation tracking, which is three degrees of freedom uh, through accelerometer and gyro information. And if uh, you have a newer device, uh, uh, it also gives you position tracking, or so-called called world tracking, uh, using visual odometry. That's basically, uh, that uses the feature detection to, uh, to track how much these particular features have moved around. It merges the data from all these different sensors, accelerometer, gyro, cameras, and detects how much you have actually moved the device around. On the iPhone 10 true, true Depth camera, it also allows you to do face and uh, depth tracking. Uh, it does allow you to do horizontal plane detection, tracking, and merging. So, for example, if you have uh, two blobs of texture on your floor, uh, it detects one blob, then another blob, then you move around a bit, it detects, oh, actually, these are the same planes. It will actually merge them together, which is good. It uses a coplanar feature point estimation algorithms, again, using those feature points that are detected from the, from the uh, video buffer. It does allow you to hit test with those detected planes and feature points if you're not looking for uh, actual horizontal planes. And it detects ambient lightning uh, for rear camera and direction lightning for front camera uh, on iPhone 10. And there's a built integration with uh, SyncKit and SpriteKit which is really convenient, but what's also important and interesting is actually what it does not provide just yet. Really importantly, it does not allow to identify or track objects like markers. Uh, many uh, older um, AR libraries actually are based on that. Uh, so for example, I think OpenCV has an implementation that uses uh, AR markers and detects them using uh, well, image detection and tracks those. So instead of uh, using visual odometry, because I guess they cannot really rely on um, camera intrinsics being really precise, like what Apple uh, can do, uh, only Apple, uh, <coughs> uh, they actually use marker detection, which is also great, which is also an important part of uh, AR. But ARKit doesn't do that just yet. It doesn't allow you to detect vertical planes, unfortunately, and um, 
It also doesn't really work well when the environment uh, that, uh, around the device really changes. So for example, if you have a horizontal plane, but then maybe it was, I don't know, maybe it was, maybe in, an, in a minute uh, that horizontal plane went away. Well, ARKit will not know about that. It will still think that horizontal plane is there. Uh, which again, for uh, release number one, still is all pretty good. And also doesn't r allow you to record and replay the sensor data, which would be very convenient for debugging. Uh, I also say yet here, uh, because if you actually use Hopper and uh, look into ARKit uh, binary for simulator, which exists for reasons, I guess. Uh, <laughs> it's like, why would you use ARKit on simulator? But still, it's there. If you actually look into that, uh, at least points one, two, and four are in one way or another are referenced in there. So I would expect a lot more things, at least in I I iOS 12. So, okay, we cannot do these things yet. So what do we do? Uh, w well, we need to detect the device screen, its center and orientation. We need to track it as it moves and rotates. So ARKit doesn't really provide that to us. So what do we do? Well, it's time for some uh, synergy. <laughs> <coughs> so. Uh, I am not in the position to tell you that right now. Uh, so, we do have access to captured video frames. Uh, that means that we can actually go crazy. We can integrate other libraries like, again, OpenCV, which is like 100 megs large or something, um, and do uh, other sorts of image analysis on those frames if we like. Like, we can actually detect markers if you wanted to. but also introduced on iOS 11 was the vision framework, which means that we can do quite a lot of different kinds of image or video analysis on those frames. Uh, like, I don't know, detect rectangles, maybe like uh, show a, like a, pink, uh, a pink screen on, on the phone and uh, detect that particular pink screen, or maybe even try to detect the uh, image of the screen that we've captured using reveal in the captured video or something, maybe even run a custom neural network that detects iOS apps or something, I don't know. Well, the easiest option for that particular demo was, well, we can just detect barcode, specifically QR code. Uh, and the good part is that uh, the results, the barcode observation, provides you both the encoded data, which we could use for different purposes, and oriented corner locations. So you can know specifically where on the image are the top left, top right, bottom left, bottom right corners of the QR code. So even if the QR code is rotated, you will get that information, which is awesome because we can detect them. Um, we can actually put them in the 3D space and derive uh, orientation position from them. A little bit of, uh, and that's just a you know, the debugging feature, uh, so it just shows where it has detected the QR codes in and where is the center. A little bit of um, graphing, scheming. So we have ARKit. ARKit provides us with a video buffer and detected planes in each AR frame. Now, using the video buffer, we can run a vision framework barcodes request, asynchronously, obviously. That gives us barcode data for app ID. That's how uh, the demo app could switch between revert and uh, soundstogram because the QR code actually encodes the little identifier of the app uh, that is being displayed. Um, and it gives us the uh, locations of corners of the barcode in the image in the buffer uh, coordinate system. But using that coordinate system, uh, using those uh, corners in image coordinate system, we can put that and detected planes uh, through hit testing in some vector map. So we can uh, perform hit testing through those uh, image coordinates into the AR world, um, find horizontal planes, assume that uh, the device will be on one of those horizontal planes, because magic, right? Um, thus detecting four corners 
of the QR code in 3D World. And then using some simple math, we can detect both the center of the QR code uh, and its orientation. Uh, specifically, we, we only need one angle, I think it's your, uh, because, uh, well, it's a horizontal plane. Again, we assume uh, that the phone actually lies on a table or other horizontal surface, so it will only rotate uh, on the vertical axis, so we only need your. We get center orientation. Another little important phase here is um, center or and orientation ideally should be put through a rolling average filter uh, just to smoothen out some of the noise that uh, QR code detection will uh, give you. And using that rolling uh, the results of that rolling average, you can apply those uh, parameters on the C node that uh, has the uh, snapshot and profit. Um, a little bit of explanation on that math. It's pretty simple, but still. So we have this QR code in space. Uh, we have four detected uh, corners. They will have 3D uh, position, obviously. Uh, we create direction vectors out of them. We average out the location. We get the center of the QR code. And we average out those two vectors and normalize them. We get orientation. And using a simple arc 10 formula, we'll get a your uh, uh, angle out of them. Uh, with um, with the rolling average for the orientation uh, angle, like a little trick is that you want to make sure, because the, the angle that uh, arc 10 will give you will be, I think, between minus uh, uh, half pi and half pi and plus half pi. And so if you have a rolling average, you probably want to stay inside the same uh, pi range. Otherwise, you'll get some weird rotation when you, know, the, you rotate the device uh, far, uh, far away. But yeah, you can. Ask me uh, later if you want to know more. Uh, and yeah, that was about it. Th there were some other tricks. Um, the expand animation uh, on the snapshot is simply just z, z axis scale because everything in a reveal snapshot is uh, just planes, basically. We can just z scale things. Uh, wireframes can be toggled on off just because Reveal represents them in the scene differently. So I can just identify one kinds of scene nodes and another kind of scene nodes. Uh, if you haven't seen, uh, if you haven't noticed, there's actually a large, large uh, uh, black plane under the snapshot. It's just a little trick to uh, mask out the uh, device screen in case the positioning is not precise enough. Just to, you know, kind of, it's a smoke and mirrors. Finally, some little bits of advice if you're interested in uh, trying some AR yourself. Obviously, look through the Apple's sample code. It's, it's pretty huge. They're like a huge utilities.swift file with tons of different functions. Uh, it makes you think, like, why is it not inside the frameworks? Like, why do we need to have all that code in, like, utilities files? Like, whatever. Uh, of course, test in a well-lit environment, because otherwise the camera will not uh, give you enough feature points, because everything will be noisy. Uh, you, will need, you will need a, uh, a surface with enough texture, otherwise, once again, there will be uh, not enough feature points for ARKit to, to detect planes or even just stuff to grab onto, anchors. Uh, and I would recommend using wireless debugging, actually, uh, because, uh, you know, if your Wi-Fi configuration is good enough, uh, it, it does take, like, a, a few seconds to copy the uh, Swift dialibs if you use Swift, over uh, to the device. But once you do that, I think it does realize that they're already there on the device, so it doesn't try to copy them again. It, it works pretty well. If, if it doesn't work for you, try disabling Wi-Fi on both the device and uh, the machine. I think it helps. And uh, I would recommend building uh, some debugging features into your app, uh, like, for example, to render feature points. I think this one uh, is actually uh, Implement, uh, integrate it into AR uh, SCN view. You can just enable that. Uh, planes, like when you detect horizontal planes, it probably would make sense to uh, put those planes inside your scene just you can, so you can see that uh, AR kit actually detected those planes. And maybe some app-specific app anchors. Like, uh, for example, on the QR code, there were some cubes um, for the corner so I can actually see that they are being detected and oriented correctly. 
And I um, think that's it. Yep, that's, that's uh, it. And questions. We've got time for questions. I've got one. Mm -hmm. Poor Matt gets in. So, so which version of reveal am I going to see this in? Uh, uh, please ask Sean about that. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Rumors confirmed. Money on the table. Mm. Well, on a table with good enough surface. <laughs> Alright, anyone? Yep, yep, yep. So, there was a lot of scary maths in there. No. How, how do you scary. actually get your head around all of that maths and is it actually easier than it, it looks? Well, it, it is quite easy if you have uh, worked with uh, 3D geometry before. But well, if you haven't? <laughs> if you <laughs> haven't, uh, I'm pretty sure there are some good resources online for some that. Really good books. <laughs> there are books, <laughs> yeah. Really good books on yep. <laughs> like, oh yeah, it's just you know, hit me up. You know. <laughs> yeah, that particular geometry, will, uh, will the math wasn't really that difficult. It's just a few vectors, but obviously it did take some time to figure out actually what to do with all that data. Like, how do you integrate all parts together? How exactly do you extract what you want out of what you have? But that's you know that's what software developers do, right? Uh, well, yep. You might just want to um, speak a little bit about how it's actually not transparent the view, the view hierarchy at any point in time, it's actually baked into your data. Oh yeah, I mean just just uh, I, I just. Oh, don't spoil I was just hoping. I was just hoping it's obvious. Yeah, the the, the actual app, the 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 IR demo app, just has. Uh, Two or three baked-in uh, Syncit archives in it. It just, wah, wah. It just, it just. Show us the guy that with the, the magicians there showing the cards. Smoke, <laughs> smoke and mirrors. Smoke and mirrors. It was fun, right? How long does it take you to do that? Uh, do you really want to know? <laughs> uh, well, I, th I think the audience might want to know how. Sure. How, how, how um, it was. It, <laughs> it was a few months ago. I think it was like maybe five evenings in one day or something like that. I don't really remember. Obviously, it take, took some time to actually figure out, okay, IRKit, all this API, what can we do with it? You know? um, not much, but not that little time either. So, so kind of average. You render a thing into an iPhone app and then just move your data structure across the wire. Easy. Well, that's what I thought I could do, right? right? But then I realized that it's just a demo, so maybe, you know, for the demo purposes, fake a few things, right? Good demo. Good work, boss. Thank you. Oh, oh, oh another question. Oh, okay.